Hello everyone. I'm bringing you a video today which I think will end up being the first in a series of videos looking at Royal Navy issue battle dress. Now the Royal Navy didn't refer to this type of uniform as battle dress. It's working dress as far as the Royal Navy is concerned. Surge working dress and we'll see the label for this in a minute or two of course. The example we're looking at today is a Second World War issue example of officers working dress. The Royal Navy were quite resistant to introducing a battle dress uniform. Of course, all three services did use battle dress during the course of the war, and by that I mean drab battle dress per the Army specification. The Army, of course, had introduced battle dress pre-war. The RAF would use the drab battle dress in certain instances, and you'd also see the Royal Air Force introduce both suits air crew and war service dress during the course of the war, which were essentially battle dress uniform made in a blue-gray material. The Royal Navy would use the drab battle dress for landing operations and in certain situations. Um, obviously the uh, commandos, the Royal Navy commandos operating on beachheads would be provided with the drab battle dress and so forth. But the Royal Navy was, in, was really quite resistant to introducing a blue battle dress type uniform and didn't refer to this as battle dress when it was introduced. This is surge working dress and in the Royal Navy orders of dress this is number 5A. So this is uh, worn in similar situations to the number five uniform, which we looked at in the mannequin of the month this month. But this is a working dress version, a surge working dress version of that uniform. And the wearing of this was quite restricted. Generally speaking, it would be worn when at sea, when afloat, and also um, naval air stations as well. And one of the primary uses, or one of the primary reasons for introducing this was for use by air crew. And number 5B was a further modification to this with concealed buttons for me, to make it more suitable for air crew use. And certainly, prior to the introduction of this uniform, there had been unofficial use of battle dress uniform, uh, tailor-made, potentially dyed drab battle dress, dyed uh, a dark blue, and that was very common amongst air crew in particular. There are quite a few photographs out there of, of men who've done this, have gone to a tailor's and had something made according to battle dress pattern or perhaps have had an existing battle dress blouse dyed a dark blue. As I say, the Royal Navy were resistant to introducing battle dress or a battle dress type uniform. This was not approved until late 1943 and then didn't really make an appearance on the scene until 1944. It wasn't in production until early 1944. So really quite late in the war. As I say, the use of this was limited. So you do see photographs of it in use. It was relatively common. It could be used ashore in place of drab battle dress in certain instances during landing operations and so forth, but its use was really quite restricted. Uh, it was certainly not to be worn off base. You wouldn't see uh, an officer uh, strolling down the street wearing this uniform, for example. As I say, this uniform, uh, there was resistance to it, but it is a practical uniform compared to the number five uniform we looked at in Mannequin of the Month. And it was permitted, particularly if you involved in more dirty duties and particularly aboard smaller ships and so forth. Uh, this was a very practical uniform and a good economy measure. It's made of rough serge, which is a cheaper material than we saw with the number five uniform. And in terms of cut and so forth, it is very practical. Looking at the details of this, uh, this is a 1944 dated example of the serge working dress. And you can see that it does follow battle dress form. And we'll ha have a look at the trousers as well, which are somewhat more plain than battle dress trousers, but we'll have a look at those in just a minute. The blouse itself, which we have here, has two patch pockets at the front here with pointed pocket flaps, as you can see. It's primarily designed to be worn open with a shirt and tie, as you can see here. The collar is similar to that which would be used on the Army's post-war 1947 pattern battle dress in that it is designed to be worn open primarily. However, there is a button under the collar here, which you can see there, which would allow this to be buttoned up closed if required. But generally speaking, it was worn with a shirt and tie as we have it here. You have three gilt officer's buttons down the front there and two smaller ones on the pockets there. And then the waistband is drawn in with a single button here, as you can see. So you're economizing on the use of buttons there, economizing on material, it's a very practical working uniform. It would see some use post-war as well, much as the Royal Navy was quite resistant to the design, as I say. We'll start moving this round now and have a look at some of the other details. Moving this round to look at the right hand side, you can see one feature carried across from battle dress is the shape of the arm. You can see that here, we have a forward curve to the arm. Now with battle dress, of course, this is in part uh, intended to allow you to bring your arms forward and bring a rifle up to the shoulder. It gives free freedom of movement in that particular motion. That's carried across to this uniform and you can see that the, the cut of the arm is per what you would see on the army's battle dress. 
Up on the shoulder, the rank is displayed using shoulder boards, and obviously this is something the Royal Navy had used previously on various uh, forms of uniform, tropical uniform and great coats used shoulder boards like this with the rank lace displayed to show rank. And we have the rank lace of a Lieutenant Commander here, a thick bar, a thin bar in the middle and another thick bar down below. And this of course is for a, uh, an officer in the Royal Navy proper as opposed to the Re Royal Naval Reserve or the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve. You have the, the normal straight lace as you can see there and the button up on the top of the shoulder board there. These are somewhat soft shoulder boards. They aren't stiffened and curved, such as those you would see on tropical uniform, and they are stitched in place. They're actually fixed to the shoulders of the uniform rather than being removable. Those on tropical uniform are removable using laces and the button attaches it at the top. Uh, in this case, these are actually stitched in place. There's no need to remove them. The cuffs fasten with a concealed button, which you can see here, if I can get it unfastened. You can see that there. So you have a the cotton drill lining there just forms a buttonhole. There's a, there's a patch of that sewn on to form a buttonhole there and then a single button that closes the cuff like that as you can see there. So that's the right hand side of the uniform. We'll have a look at the back of this now. There's no need to look at the other side. It's essentially a mirror image and we'll have a look at the back and then turn this inside out and have a look at the internal details. Looking at the back of this here, you can see very plain back to this. There's no seams or anything here, as you can see. We have the waistband there, and you can see how much this draws that in, draws the waist in here, and the bloused effect at the back here, the darts in around the waistband there, as you can see. So pretty plain there, not a huge amount to see, but you can really see the effect of the blousing there at the back. So now we have the blouse turned inside out, and you can see details of the construction on the inside. You can see the stitching on the collar here, that button, which allows the collar to be buttoned up if required. It's normally can see it's concealed under the collar when it's turned down. Cotton reinforcing here for where the pocket flaps attach. And there's also reinforcing around where the sleeves attach here as well. You see the lining for the cuffs here, the detail of construction there. No gusset or anything, just simple open cuffs. And you can see the lining to the waistband here as well, looking at this at the front. Looking at the right hand side of this, you can see we have the remains of a paper label that was stuck in here, and there actually is one up in the arm here as well, possibly a manufacturing label from when this was actually uh, produced in the factory. But this has the number 1799 on it. I don't know the significance of that, but we do have that paper label up in the arm there. If we lift the arm out of the way here, you can hopefully see on the waistband here we have the naval inspection stamp. We'll get a close up of that now so you can see the detail of that. It's just an ink stamp in the waistband, as you can see here. And then looking at the back here, you can see again very plain across the back here. We do have the waistband coming around here with the cotton lining to it, and then we have the label here. There is also a paper label which has the number 10 on it, and that might well correspond to the size which we have on the main label here. We'll have a look at this label now in some detail. And you can see this label reads Admiralty Blue Surge Working Dress Blouse Officers, and this is size number 10, height 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 10 breast 36 to 37 inches and waist 31 to 32 inches, which I believe means it does correspond to an army size 10 in battle dress, if I remember correctly. You then have the manufacturer there, H Lottery and Company Limited, and the date of manufacture, 1944. We'll move on to have a look at the trousers now, and these are very plain, as you can see here. They are simply a pair of blue wool serge trousers. We'll lift these up here, they're quite wide-legged, as you can see there, in common with the style of the time. You have a button fly with one reversed button at the top. If I unbutton this here, you'll be able to see. You can see you have a reverse button at the top there and then the button fly coming down there. And you have brace buttons to support these, of course. You can see the four brace buttons across the front there. You have side pockets in the side seams, as you can see there. And then if we turn these round, you have two rear pockets, which have internal bags and just a button through the outer cloth there to secure them. You can see two smaller battle dress type buttons there. You do have a split at the centre there and obviously the two rear buttons for braces there. And then we have the label on its side up in the waistband here, at the top of the waistband here. And we'll have a look at this label now in some detail. Looking at the trouser label here, you can see the designation Admiralty Blue Surge Working Dress Trousers Officers, which corresponds to the designation we saw on the blouse. Size number 13 in this instance, which gives a height of 5 foot 11 to 6 foot, waist 33 to 34 inches, breech 39 to 40 inches and leg 33 and a half inches and these are again made by H Lottery and Company Limited and again the date of manufacture is 1944. You see the inside detail of the trousers here you have the two bags for the hip pockets there the lining down the fly there as you can see 
details of the button fly there. There is a paper label on this side here, but unfortunately it's, it's completely sort of faded out. You can't uh, see what was written on this in the past, but there is a paper label stuck in there. And then if we turn these round, you can see the details at the rear with the bags for the two rear pockets and the lining all the way around the waistband there, and obviously details of the construction and so forth. These have been shortened at some point. They've been turned up, as you can see there. But uh, presumably by the previous owner or possibly for where the time, I don't know but they have been turned up. They fit me and I'm not a 33 and a half inside leg, I'm about a 31, so they've, they've been shortened at some point in the past. But that's the working dress trousers there. So I do hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, I will probably end up making a series looking at different versions of Royal Navy battle dress, and of course the Royal Navy not referring to it as that, but it, it is a battle dress uniform basically. Um, we'll have a look at post-war use of this. I have a cadet's version of this, which we'll talk about, which is a post-war example. Uh, I have a tailor-made example as well and also an example which is actually a dyed drab battle dress and um, we'll have a look at that as well in a future video and talk a little bit more about uh, the unofficial use of this prior to the introduction of this working uniform. Fortunately, don't have an example of the number 5B uh, dress to show you but it's very similar to this other than having concealed buttons and that was designed primarily for air crews as I say introduced as I remember in 1945. So hopefully you found it interesting looking at this as I say if you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, and in particular the videos talking about other examples of Royal Navy use of battle dress going forward, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as I always say, massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So, until next time, bye for now.